Hi, Hiram here. Earlier this year I started a couple of videos uh, with this fancy feast stove, some modifications that I made to it, and a couple of tests. I used it with the Vargo Bot, the stainless steel one, not the titanium one. And I got the thought that this fancy feast burner would work better with a larger pot like that Boy Scout pot that I had, something with a larger diameter. Because when you put a narrow pot on like this, a good portion of the bottom of the pot is blocked off by the pot stand part of this. Kind of like this. You can see how much, how much space is taken up by this where the flames and heat don't get to. All you're hitting is this small outside edge. So I was thinking about that and it turned out that Colorado Camper left a message on that uh, video that I did of that saying Hiram I have an idea to run by you what if you built a new version of the fancy feast stove and replacing the inner tomato paste can that's this part with hardware cloth similar to your uh, cobble stove from way back that would increase the area on the pot where the flames can hit which would be helpful for narrow pots like the bot without sacrificing stability what do you think well, <laughs> for those of you that might not know who Colorado Camper is, you should check them out. I'll leave a link down below. Good videos on the pots, on the burners and stoves and stuff. But it's amazing how a lot of us think together the same way. I'm kind of babbling here. It's a little bit hot again. Sorry. But it was a really good idea that Colorado Camper had. I was thinking along that lines, but a different way. Instead of using the hardware cloth inside here, what I was going to do was go back to some of my other tests that I've done where I nailed them. In this case, using the three 16-penny nails. I love these things. They're real handy around campsites. But in this one where I used the tomato paste can on the top, what I did was I got a shorter cut can, like so, and I drilled a hole in the top. Unfortunately, with this one, what I used was drills like this. The step drills, they're real handy. But on my first one, I wasn't thinking, and I drilled the hole way too big. Because when you put the nails in this, they spread out way too much. So I made another one where I drilled a smaller hole in the middle and then just some breather holes around the outside edge and for those of you that might not remember the fancy feast stoves are the ones where they're made out of fancy feast cat food cans with a inner ring of carbon felt as a wick and then the tomato paste can is just used for a pot stand on it but in this case I cut a shorter one make a smaller hole and then the three 16 penny nails, when you stick them in like so, they form a nice tripod, which a tripod is usually pretty, pretty stable. And the bot does fit on there. Real nice and neat. Now my hopes are, I'm going to do a test today to see if the flames will go up and hit more of the bottom of the pot and make the boil time just a little bit faster. So what I'll do now is I'll put some alcohol in this so that the wick gets soaking. I'll get some water prepped, and I'll be right back for a test. Okay, so I've got about one fluid ounce of methanol in here. The amount of methanol is not really that important. I just want to see how fast this will boil rather than a run out time. Two cups of water, setting at 60 degrees. Let me just straighten this out. There we go. Now the nice thing with these fancy feast stoves is you can set the pot right on there and start it with the pot actually on just like this so let's try lighting this okay so that's lit start that the room temperature is 78 degrees humidity is about 64 it looks like it says so it's not really that hot in here it's just humid uh, but two cups of water at 60 when I did this test before using the other fancy feast stove this took 16 <laughs> take that back this took 6 minutes 
and 40 seconds to get two cups of water to a boil. So let's see how fast this will go. We're now two minutes into the test and the temperature is up to 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty nice flame pattern. It does, oops, I'm kind of messing it up there, moving around. Um, I don't know, it, it still looks like it's going to the outside edge of the pot, but I'm sure more of the bottom of the pot is being exposed. So let's see how long this takes to get to a boil. There we 210 to 11, 212 in 6 minutes 42 seconds. 6 minutes 42. Huh. It didn't quite go out the way I thought it would. On the previous test using the fancy feast stove, it took 6 minutes and 42 seconds. This time, I'm sorry, that was, uh, where's my notes? Yeah, 6 minutes 40 seconds, and this time it was about 6 minutes 42 seconds. Now the thing is, if you saw when I had the close up with camera 2, and some of the pictures. I'll have to look over the pictures that I took. With the fancy feast, the flames are on the outside edge. So they come up and bow out from there. So maybe the flames never do get into the center part of this. There'll be heat there, but no real flames. See how like this, when the pot's off of it, let me turn out the light. See how the flames are kind of going up and then coming up through the middle. But with the pot on there, it pushes it down and makes these flames come up and out on the outside edge. On other stoves that we've tried where there was a wick in the middle, that's where you get your heat. The thing with flames, if you have an outside circle edge, that's where all the flames stay. It's like there's no air on the inside of it to get more burning. I guess maybe one way to do it with the nails is to get longer nails and elevate the pot a little bit more. Maybe it needs a little bit more than that one inch sweet spot between the uh, stove and the bottom of the pot. Like I said, see how when I take the pot away, the flames go in and up through the center. That might be interesting. So, basically it looks like doing it with the old fancy feast or doing it with the nails really makes no difference in the, the boil time. Not enough of a difference to make a difference. Good idea. I thank Colorado Camper for that. Uh, I always look forward to hearing from Colorado Camper and some of the other guys around. People around, I should say. But I thank you for watching. I look forward to your input, questions, remarks, helpful suggestions. And as always, watch for my buddy Max. Bye now.